I serve as the Executive Director for the National Consortium for Health Science Education. Hopefully you are familiar with our website and um, for future events, for future webinars, you just go to events across the top. And for some reason it's not taking me there, but there you go. So there are next, um, today you're in for a treat. You obviously know that. Next Wednesday, we have another webinar scheduled. Uh, Games are good by Kim Smith. Some of you might know Kim. And then um, we have another webinar scheduled on the 24th about um, health informatics. We have one on March 3rd about um, medical assisting. So just um, invite you to continue to go to um, that part of the web, that area of the website and um, find out about upcoming webinars. The webinars are sponsored by the consortium and we are a collaborative of health science state leaders from across the nation, as well as publishers and educational resource providers. We also have um, representatives from professional organizations who are interested in the students that you're producing. So um, we sponsor these webinars on Wednesdays and we do them at four o'clock and we sponsor them along with um, our teacher organization, which you can go to the educators tab and we'll tell you a little bit about the teacher organization, the cost of that being $45 a year. And you also get some exclusive classroom resources and some opportunities um, for a professional learning network. So um, I invite you to visit that page. If you are not already a member, we have our officers listed there. And there is also a, a little button you can join online. So we thank the um, teacher organization for helping sponsor this. And Katrina Haynes is actually on the call today. She is the president of that organization. Just a few administrative things before we get started. Um, we will be recording this, as I said, and we do post that. We do post the um, recordings on our website, and that is at this tab, again, the events tab. And if you go to webinars, you can see all the webinars that we've had over the past year and a half, and the recordings are there. If the presenter did a PowerPoint or had a flyer, they also uh, share that with us and we put it there as well. Um, we will provide you if you're interested in a certificate of participation. It's a one hour um, documentation of your professional development participation. Then if you would just email, there's been a little bit of a change. If you've emailed in the past, um, you always emailed to me, but um, we've been able to diversify some responsibilities. So um, if you're interested in a certificate of participation, it should go to hsea at healthscienceconsortium.org. Such a long address there, but we can uh, get that out to you. Um, with that being said, um, I believe that many of you are already familiar. I'm gonna stop share with uh, our guest speaker today. And I, I've, I've already teased a little bit about, you're probably a member of her fan club already because Starla has been providing supportive, wonderful, oh, there's her dog crate over there. And so Starla's been providing wonderful professional <laughs> development and support for health science teachers for many, many years. So. Um, we are so happy. She is a member of the consortium. Her, um, her company is a member and we appreciate that support. And she, um, this is what she loves to do. And we are in her studio today, live from Texas. <laughs> so uh, she said she'll take, um, she'll take some questions in the chat. She'll try to answer those and I'll try to help monitor that. And Katrina will help me too, to make sure um, we don't miss any questions. And then at the end, there'll be a few moments too for questions. So with that, Starla, I'm passing the microphone to you. Woohoo, y'all guys, we are ready, yes? <laughs> First of all, I wanna tell you, I am so grateful for all of you for hanging in there. Way to have the definition of tenacity this past year and being so flexible and hanging in there and trying to find a way to inspire your students 
I know some of you have like done the happy dance that you're back to being face to face with your students. Others are still juggling uh, both and some of you just uh, virtual. So I thought it'd be fun to do a little lesson with you guys that you could take back to your classroom today. You see over here, uh, this is the hands on body systems, which uh, you know will involve a little bit of clay, but this is also mainly the stars notes, the module we're gonna use. All these lessons you guys, you have access to, it's on the website here and they're downloadable or you can do a PO and you can just email me that, all right? And if you need any information, you know you can always uh, give me a call, all right? This is what we're gonna be using today is these modules right here in this lesson. We are gonna use uh, the muscle and movement, just a little bit of it. And we're gonna talk about the blood delivery of actually what happens inside a capillary bed that students, they think they know when they look at it, they really miss the biggest picture of all. And we're gonna, of course, you know, we're gonna terrorize them a little bit and actually get them to do their own laundry. I know, watch what happens here. Cause I believe that in content, sometimes we can reach out and get students and we can grab their souls and make them better people. Okay, without them even knowing we're doing it. And then we'll do a little bit of the construction of the heart bypass. We'll use that as a graph. So that is what <clears throat> we're going to be using. Those are the modules when you go to the website that we're going to be using today. All right. Okay. So let's just get started. So you all are very familiar with this, this diagram right here. Yes. It's in every textbook, health science, anatomy makes no difference. Okay. And so I'll put this up here. Now, a lot of times, when students see this diagram, this is all they see. They see um, red blood cells going in one at a time like first graders. It's fun to show them that the, the, um, the wall of this capillary is the only half the thickness of the piece of paper they're writing on, okay? Also, they see it goes red to blue. So this is what students think. They think, oh yeah, uh, the blood goes in, it drops off the oxygen, picks up CO2 and it's out of there. That's what they think, but they miss the big picture. Okay, so first of all, let's just talk about the first thing. Let's talk about that oxygen delivery, okay? First of all, picture each red blood cell is a four-door sedan, okay? Just a simple Honda Accord, whatever, okay? I wanna up it, say Mercedes four-door C-Class, whatever, okay? So you're driving along here and you are a red blood cell and you have four seats and you go into the lungs and all four of you get in. So you're all oh. oxygen. Darla, put a um, put a, a semicolon right there. Um, they said that you're small. You're so she. You think um, if she shared her screen, Katrina? I was wondering, can you share your screen, Starla? Let me look. I'm on a tablet. That doesn't give me that connection. We got it. Or if you guys pin her, it'll be big. You'll be able to see it. Pin me. Okay. So everybody individually has to pin her? Or you can click the speaker view up in the top right. Okay, I just pinned her. You make okay. it bigger? Did that do anything? Does she have to accept it? No, I think everybody has to do that themselves, right? Whoever was speaking up a few minutes ago, Brenda, yeah. Yes. So go to the very top. There's a waffle up there that says view. I call it a waffle. <laughs> scroll up, scroll over it and it'll say speaker view, gallery view. Click on speaker view and then we'll see Starla in all her glory. Because I'm just sad if I can't see it big enough. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to be big. Okay. You are bigger than life, Starla. <laughs> All right, does anybody need help before we start back? Is everybody good? Okay, it, um, speak review, all right. Super, let's okay. go. Go. We good? All right. So when we drive our little red blood cell through the car, through, let's say we're just going through muscle tissue, but we're sitting here at this webinar. We're not using a lot of oxygen. So only one oxygen jumps off and one CO2 jumps in, but then we head back to the lungs. Granted, we're considered deoxygenated, but we still have three oxygens and one carbon dioxide. So that's good to show students that when I go back to the lungs, 
this red blood cell is still 75, 80% oxygenated, even though it's called deoxygenated. Students think all of the oxygen dropped off and it didn't. And what the window this opens you up for just with this diagram, just that little tiny lesson is CPR. <clears throat> Why we don't have to do uh, the breaths. It's more important that you do accurate and deep compressions to keep the brain and the kidneys alive because there's enough oxygen in the blood and there's residual air in the lungs as the blood goes through. And that's why in CPR compressions are more important than jumping over there and doing a breath. So that's, that's the neat window for that. Now, the next thing they miss is they miss, we talk about plasma and we talk about, you know, the, we talk about the GI system and how the nutrients have to go to the liver and the liver's the grocery store and it disperses it, but they don't connect it. So now we're gonna make them connect it. All right, so first of all, everybody look right here. I got my plasma, y'all see it? Yeah, especially, went and donated today. It's beautiful, isn't it? Been a clean diet, look how pretty that is. Yes, okay, we've got my plasma. So what is plasma? The plasma, of course, we know we tell students it's the liquid part of the blood, but in here, what actually is in it that we want in this plasma? Well, first of all, everybody take your hands like this like you're gonna eat, now eat with me. Come on, Nancy Ann, I'm watching you I'm not eating. Okay, so what's in that food? Glucose, right? Glucose, which is basically the fuel for most cells in the body except for the heart, okay? And so this glucose is our fuel. Now, nice window here, we're gonna talk about nutrition. One thing about our kids do not have trouble with, our, our students, we do not have trouble getting enough glucose. In fact, 80% of everything they eat in their diet has enough glucose. If you, this is like money. If you get too much money, you save it, right? If you paid all your bills and you have money left over and you still have enough to live on, you go save it. Well, that's what the body does with glucose. This is like, this is like money to the body. If it doesn't use all the glucose in the day, then it's going to save it. And it saves it in the triple BT butt, boobs, belly, and thighs. That's right. Those are your savings account for glucose. That's why we have a big time overweight obesity problem in this country because there's so much sugar in the foods we eat, especially fast foods. So there's a window. I'm just going to, I'm introducing this to them and I'm not preaching to them. I'm just kind of getting them to think. Okay. So glucose. Well, of course, water, right? Okay. Water is in there. Okay, what's some other things? Amino acids, hormones, messengers to the cells, okay? Um, we've got vitamins and minerals, which help the, the cell to metabolize, okay? Don't worry, I'm gonna put it up in front of you, don't worry, okay? All right, and then of course, there can be medications. Of course, if they're not being taken on a prescription, they're known as drugs, that's the definition, right? So here we go. That is what's in that plasma, plus more. There's a lot more in there, okay? It's the grocery store, it's the good stuff. And then of course, the oxygen is delivering this good stuff. Okay, so here we go. Now let's just take a look. I'm gonna take a close look at this, this capillary. All right, let me put it up close to you here. Look at this beautiful capillary. Look at the single flat cells that make up the wall. You see the arrows going in between? There you go, okay? So take a look here. I'm gonna make this even bigger, okay? All right, so this right here is my red blood cell going from red to a blue. We know oxygen's being delivered. But here is the thin cells in plasma, which is carrying all the groceries, is going to leak out of that thin wall into the tissue, which is known as interstitial fluid or matrix. All right, everybody see it leaving? Okay, the question is, why, why does it leave? Well, it gets pushed out, okay? The body, and my nurse is in here, it's okay if you have an academic orgasm because you know about fluid shift in the body, okay? All right, so remember this. We teach the students two big words, hydrostatic, I know it's almost like grease. You want to jump on the wood and start singing. Hydrostatic, okay? Hydro meaning water, okay? Right? Hydrostatic meaning water is always going to be a high pressure. 
okay? So hydrostatic always means high. That's a high pressure, okay? Then the other word they wanna learn is osmotic pressure, which is always low pressure. Okay, so we know one thing in anatomy, body systems, and in nursing. Fluid moves from high to low. It goes from the most crowded to the least crowded. All right, so here we go. This right here in the beginning of the capillary bed has what's called BHP. All right, BHP, blood hydrostatic pressure. It is coming into the tissue and because in the tissue is tissue osmotic pressure, which we call top. All right, so high to low, it's gonna make sense. Here we go. The plasma is gonna leak out of this capillary bed and go into the tissue. It's gonna bathe it. All right, it's simple, okay? So to give an example of that, we're gonna use these pancakes, all right? Now, everybody, I'm gonna tell you, you can make your own pancakes for this, but I'll tell you, the cheapest thing to do and time-wise is go to McDonald's. I don't know what's in their pancakes. They're disgusting, okay? Once you ever use these, you'll, you'll never, <laughs> never wanna eat them. Okay, so here's the thing about them, all right? McDonald's pancakes, first of all, very affordable, okay? And they will work really well for you. So if you have six classes you're doing this demonstration, you get six, six sets of them. Okay, I let students, I kind of hand them around and say, feel them, feel these pancakes, okay? This is representing this tissue right here under your skin, known as loose adipose connective tissue. That is the tissue, the connective tissue under skin that is highly vascular. Now everybody go ahead and touch your skin and realize there's no blood vessels in the skin. It is avascular. It is fed by diffusion from underneath. Okay, so here we go. I have tissue osmotic pressure. Here comes my plasma right here. And I'm gonna add, as, the, as it comes out, it's gonna pour over, it's pouring over the pancakes. And it's creepy how big they get after the, after a while they'll try to climb over the edge of the plate. It's scary. Okay, so look how much matrix is in and around. You've all done this before, okay? The, oh, what is the plasma? Very good. Let me tell you what the plasma is. Now you got to sell this. You got to sell this to your students, okay? So I usually use a like this. I use a Oh, plastic container that's still see-through like this, and it's warm. Okay, so what you're going to do is in, in the module, it tells you how to make this and set it up, okay? But you're going to take the syrup, you're going to put a little bit of syrup in it, and then you add hot water. And then you tell them, this is plasma. My neighboring uh, teacher next door to me, Nancy Allen, she donated this for you this, this morning, you know, and you got to sell it to them, okay? And they're like, no. And you tell them they feel it and it's warm. They're like, ooh, cool. Yeah, they're, they're just, you gotta, you gotta sell it. Now, some of them saw me one time and said, I saw you coming out of the bathroom. I think it's pee. And I'm like, well, let's see. And they're like, ah! and they just get all grossed out. And I'm like, it's too sweet to be pee. You wouldn't want that much sugar in your and that would be bad. That would be a diabetic issue. So it's just, all it is is, uh, you, <laughs> all it is is just the syrup and some warm water. Okay, so now we have this plasma. All right, there it is. Now look how saturated the tissue is. It's got plenty of, of being bathed. Now let me show students how this is happening. I'll move this out of the way real quick. All right. Hang on, we sprung the leak. There we go. Okay, good platelets. All right, here we go. The plasma is coming out. Now watch this. It's matrix or interstitial fluid. Then, make this bigger for you guys. There we go. It's going to move into the cell. It moves into the cell. What's cell water? All students know this. They learn this in biology. Cytoplasm. Okay, so plasma moved from the blood to the matrix 
into the cell. So it's plasma matrix cytoplasm. When it moves into the cell, it feeds it. It's delivering hormones, it's delivering amino acids and glucose and water. Now, the problem is now is that this cell is going to swell up. It's going to get bigger and bigger. Okay. Now, if it if it keeps getting big, it will blow up, which you all know is lysis. Okay. We don't want that. So of course, now the pressure in the cells getting high. So what's it do? Dirty cytoplasm moves out. So urea and ammonia and creatine and any kind of waste product that's left over from cell metabolism is going to move out of the cell. So this dirty cytoplasm is going to move out the same way the clean cytoplasm moved in. So now this is matrix or it may be lymph. It depends on who's going to pick him up. And then if it gets back up into the capillary bed, it's called plasma again. All right. Does that make sense? So I tell students, think of it, think of it as standing on the beach and the, the waves are coming in and you're a cell and the waves come in and up around here, they're bringing you clean cytoplasm. That's the matrix fully loaded with groceries. And then it pulls away from you. It's taken the dirty cytoplasm away and it's going to get picked up by your um, blood or it's going to get picked up by the lymph. So for example, here we go on this. This is again out of the, these are exact pictures that come out of the module, the cardiovascular module part two, which is blood. Okay, so here it comes in, it's feeding. It's saturating just like our pancakes saturated. And now this matrix gets picked up by blood so it becomes plasma again, or it gets picked up by these lymph vessels to become lymph. All right, so what do students see? They see that fluid is named by location, but it's all the same fluid. It's just moving into the tissue and then it's moving out of the tissue. Okay, so we go back to our pancakes. Now, don't be surprised. Take a look at them now. Look at this. They have grown. This one's trying to crawl over the edge. See it? <laughs> okay, all right. So, everybody cool? All right, so I need to feed them again. Here we go, give them some more fluid. All right, so now it's gonna flip. So we had tissue, osmotic pressure, pressure. it flips and becomes tissue hydrostatic pressure. The blood becomes blood osmotic pressure. And so it moves from high to low. All right. So now students see at the beginning of a capillary bed, it's oozing. It's like going to those, um, like an amusement park and it's hot in the middle of the summer and you're underneath one of those misters. You're a cell in a capillary bed. That's just like plasma misting over you. But then when it gets saturated, the fluid now moves up. So watch this. All right. Okay. So. I'm gonna take this wonderful paper tap. This is gonna represent the venous or the post part of the capillary. So now I have, right here, I have the tissue hydrostatic pressure, and now this is blood osmotic pressure. Now y'all watch closely because it goes so quickly. You ready? Here we go. I put it in there. See it moving up? There it goes. Okay, I lied, it's not fast. It's not. That's how slow it is. Problem, in order for the capillary bed to pull fluid out of the tissue, we have to have a suction. Remember that veins have valves and whenever they open, it pulls water up, it's a capillary pull. All right, in order to make this pull out of the capillary bed better, we got to get up and move. That's right. So the squeezing of the muscles help pull the fluid out of the tissues. So our cardiovascular system, especially the capillary fluid pickup is totally reliable, needed so much on us moving. 
So every, every student, every person has been in a car ride or a plane ride that was exceptionally long, right? And so what happens? You're not moving. So what happens is the fluid sits and it saturates inside here. And then you go and you pull your socks down and look. That's right, it's like pitting edema. Yeah, you see, the, you see the diagram of your socks in your skin. Well, that's because all this fluid is still stuck there. And once you start moving, it pulls it out of there. All right, does that make sense to them? So once again, you're showing them that a capillary bed isn't just oxygen and gas, you know, and carbon dioxide delivery and also correct them on what they think on it. But also it's mainly the fluid delivery so that we can feed the tissue and then clean it by pulling that dirty cytoplasm out of there, which the kidneys, that's what the kidneys are gonna filter out is the cell pot, okay? That's right, the waste products from the cell. All right, everybody good with this? Okay, now I know you're thinking, wow, that, that may be too much, but remember this, when you solidify this lesson, of course, I wouldn't teach it quite as fast, you know, we draw it together and everything, I just did it fast because, well, well y'all already know it. But two, um, uh, I want to make sure I can get in as much as possible because I've got some other fun things you can do with this. So the neat thing about this is that when students grasp this and they understand, then they understand what I talk, when you talk about fluid shift. Why, uh, if you take too much salt in in your diet and your fingers swell up, they realize that there's a high to low pressure imbalance and that's what causes the fluid to shift in the tissue. Okay, now to move on here, okay, I'm gonna show you some fun things, stuff you can do. Let me add some more plasma. Okay, now I wanna show you something that's kind of fun. Once again, I don't give this all to students all at one time, okay, because I have to pick apart the wiring they have for nutrition because every night they sit and watch TV and they see commercials for Burger King and KFC and and Taco Bell, Mr. Meat, Taco Bell. And so they, that, they think that's all good nutrition. The dollar menu is, is horrible. So I, we have to convince them in small pieces that that food may taste good, it may be cheap, but it only feeds your stomach, it doesn't feed your body. So when the plasma goes into the tissue to feed it, there's not any amino acids or very few. Um, there's not a lot of vitamins and minerals. So the cell can't function at its high capacity. Therefore, it doesn't repair as well. They get sick more often, maybe even have depression. So if we change the diet, and remember, if you take something away from a kid, you got to be able to give them something back. So if I tell you, don't go spend $5 on the dollar menu, I tell them another place they can go eat for $5 and get better nutrition, like McAllister's, you know, uh, a salad. All kinds of, I give them all kinds of neat techniques, you know, a um, handful of uh, almonds and um, some dried fruit, anything, uh, sliced apple, anything is going to give them, they can spend their money and give them better nutrition. Okay, so first of all, as I gave this, all right, I showed you earlier how beautiful and clear this beautiful plasma is. This is what it looks like if I drink. Or have some ice cream. So all I did was add some creamer to it. Look what happened. Yeah, see it? That is plasma after I've eaten ice cream. Because the fat is floating in the plasma. Now, of course, once it goes to the liver, the liver will take care of it. And that's where your taxis, your LDLs and HDLs come into play. But if I have a lot of this, this begins to get deposited in the walls of my arteries, the birth of atherosclerosis. That's right, so nice window. So I show them, we can tell when somebody gives plasma or gives whole blood and we spin it down, we can tell how good their diet is by how cloudy their plasma is. That's a fun little pocket lesson to do them just start class with. All right, so we're gonna go over here. Let's change their lives real quick, okay? All right, so I told you that this was the uh, loose areolar connective tissue underneath your skin, right, everybody? Yeah, I always tell students, just feel that, you know, you got a dead layer in the under over the living layer to protect it. So when you're being romantic with your honey bunny, you know, you're rubbing dead skin against dead skin. It is so romantic. Okay. And you should see the students go, you're killing me. All right, here we go. So 
We're gonna do skin real quick, and then we're gonna talk about burns. Ready? So now students kind of mastered that. They kind of understand what's going on. And so here we go. This is my first layer. And you see how this first layer is absorbing the plasma. Well, this is the mitotic layer of the skin, okay? And of course it my, does mitosis and it pushes the next cell up. There it goes, there's the next cell. And it's still getting fed, you bet. Because again, this tissue underneath loose areolar is like bubble wrap. It doesn't have a lot of cells, but it has tons and tons of matrix. So its job is to feed, there it goes, look at it. It's feeding this tissue. But as the cells keep getting pushed farther and farther away, as you place these layers on here, and by the way, your school uh, paper towels, you know, those low bid paper towels, this works great for this because they barely absorb anything, okay? All right, here it goes. Look at that, okay. So now we see right here, look at this. We see a top layer that has no, no feeding, it's completely dry. Yeah, see it, it's completely dry. And because of that, we have to put glycerin on it, like lotion, in order to moisten this dry layer so we don't look, you know, ashy or whatever. Okay, we don't like that. All right, so I tell students, when you take your shirt off, watch this. See, look, woo, this flies off. When you roll over in bed, woo, these dead cells fly off into your sheets. And I do it two or three more times. And they're like, oh, I am said, don't worry about it because... There's these little microscopic arthropods that live in your sheets called dust mites, and they'll eat the skin cells. So you don't have to worry about your skin cells being in there. Now, when you do this, watch their faces. So I tell them, but not only do they eat your skin cells, but they also poop in your bed. They have sex in your bed. They lay eggs. Those eggs hatch. They look just like the adults called nymphs, and then they shed exoskeletons. And and the longer you wait, the bigger the community of dust mites grow in your bed. And you can tell because your bed kind of gets a shiny, you know, uh, look to the sheet and kind of gets a little funky smell. So, you know, you've got like Manhattan of dust mites. Yeah. Just look at them. Look at their faces. So then I tell them that you don't, if you don't want that, then all you need to do is two things. First, just do this, okay? In the morning when you get up after you've micturated, because that's the first thing we all really think about doing, okay? And you come back to your bed, you can little spritz it, you know, spritz your bed with some free breeze or something, and then make your bed. Because you, by covering your bed and folding it, you don't make it acceptable to the bed, so you decrease the amount of dust mites that will land on your sheets. That's the first thing. Plus, you work so hard during the day to be successful, you deserve to get in bed to a made bed. That's right because you deserve that. The second thing is, is that at once a week, once a week, you wash your sheets. Now notice the word I use. I said the word you. You wash your sheets, not mom, not dad, not the maid service, you wash your sheets. Because what I'm trying to do now, teachers, a little time out, is I want to do, is I want to teach students how not to be the roommate nobody wants. I'm teaching them through just this little lesson and I'm terrorizing them with dust mites. So I teach them how to use a washer. And then I tell them, this is what you do. Set your timer, okay? What's your program? Now we're gonna do study skills, okay? When a commercial comes on, you study your notes, okay? You look over your notes. But when your alarm goes off, you set it for 20 minutes or whatever, 35 minutes and the washer goes off. You get up, you put them in the dryer. Then once they're all out of the dryer, you set it for 45 minutes, you go get it, you go make your bed. Don't lay your sheets on the bed and then sleep on the sheets because that's not what successful people do. So now you'll be surprised about 80% of your students will do this. First of all, they're now terrified of dust mites. Your type A students, watch out for them. They'll wash their sheets every day. So tell them, calm down. Once a week is good enough, okay? Now you'll have a couple of students go, oh, I'm not gonna do that, but they'll think about it. And then later on, you'll watch their parents will go, you know, at open house, I had no idea, but I, I don't know what you said to them, but gosh, they're washing their sheets. They wash their own sheets. They won't let me wash their sheets and they make their bed every day. I don't know what you said. I've been telling them for years and it's amazing. You just use that little pocket lesson for them, okay? All right, now, and it's fun. I have a great time with that. Okay, so let's go back to this real quick and let's talk about burns, okay? So I'm gonna add my dead layer again. I don't need to feed them. This tissue's gotten hungry again. Okay, here we go. 
you see how this has kind of gotten wet? Okay, so let me add the dead layer on there. Now, the dead layer is important because if we didn't have the dead layer, we couldn't stand to have our clothes on us. Our, the, the dendrites, which you know is sensory receptors, would be so close to our clothes, we couldn't stand it. So the dead layer helps us kind of have a little barrier. And of course, you all know about calluses. The more friction there is, the thicker we make the dead layer. Okay, all right. So I love to show this to students, okay? All right, so the skin, okay? The skin being the major protector, the largest organ in your body has these really cool cells called melanocytes in them. And melanocytes, you all know, make pigment to protect. It's God's natural sunscreen, okay? Now, I, Probably I'm going to make up a number. I have about a hundred melanocytes per square inch. Hence, I have to get my sunscreen out of a bottle. But other students have darker skin. What's that mean? They have more melanocytes per square inch. They make more melanin. So their basal layer, this layer down here at the very bottom on top of the pancakes, are protected from dangerous sun rays. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. So. What's the purpose of skin color? Sunscreen. That's it. That's the only purpose of it. Man is the one through fear that group people by skin color. So I love to open that window to them. Okay. The only purpose of skin color is sunscreen. Okay. All right. And then that gives you a window to talk about skin cancers. Okay. Now let's talk about burns. Okay. When sun comes through here and having lack of melanocytes, okay, I can get irritation, inflammation, I get a sunburn. I can also get it by having a brief exposure to heat, which you all know is a first degree burn. You know, it's red and tender, big deal, okay? But what happens if I come in contact or I have too much exposure to sun and the dead layer gets melted together, okay? It melted together. So watch what happened. See, I take my, I take my pancake, I take my paper towels and I make a bubble. See it? This is full of plasma that's still oozing up, trying to feed it the tissue, but this got melted together. So the fluid gets captured and you all know that as a blister the telltale sign of a second degree burn. But what you're doing with this is showing them what the blister really is. You should see students go, oh, don't break these. Because when you do, then you make this area exposed to infection, okay? All right, so we can show them a picture, of course. I love pictures of a second degree burn, okay? So you know this person wish they would have put sunscreen on their feet. Look at that. Ooh, that hurt, makes me hurt too. That just makes me hurt looking at that. Ouch is right. Yeah, no shoes for them for about two weeks. All right, so everybody see? So I tell students, blisters filled with liquid, second degree burn. All right, now, here comes this part. Contact with heat that melts. Now notice I keep using the word melts. The skin is actually melt, okay? So why do we call it a burn and not a melt? Well, because the dendrites, okay, the receptors in the skin give the sensation to the brain of burning, so we call it a burn. But structurally, we're really just melting the skin, just like butter on a hot pan, because we all know that cell membranes are made out of phospholipids, fat, and when they come in contact with heat, they melt. So that's why you have more heat receptors in your hands than you do cold receptors because that's more dangerous to you. Okay, now watch this. I'm gonna come in contact with maybe uh, the exhaust pipe of a motorcycle or um, extremely hot fluid. Watch what happens. It melts the entire thickness. See that? Okay, and this basal layer have these cool little connective tissue fibers called reticular fibers, they look like cobwebs. And then that connective tissue, and they 
glycoproteins and reticular fibers bond together for what we call the basal lamina. See it? That's a base. Remember, you can't pull that off. You've all done that. If you've peeled a blister and you got to the end of it, it wouldn't come off because your skin is held on. But when we melt this, a third degree burn, that attachment's melted off. And what happens? The whole thing comes off. Just like when you eat fried chicken. That's right, that's a third degree burn. Yep, it just slides on off because the skin detaches from the connective tissue underneath, okay? Yeah, so that is a sign of a third degree burn. Like this little poor little baby that got stuck in too hot of water. See the skin come off? Yeah, it just slides off. What is that exposing? That exposes the loose areolar connective tissue, the pancakes underneath. Yeah. So then we well, windows talk about how we got to take care of this. Well, one of the problems that happens is, of course, plasma is still feeding this tissue, and the plasma keeps coming up to feed a tissue that's no longer there and it weeps. So we always say third degree burns weep. Well, what is the weeping? It's plasma coming out and and falling off because there's no tissue to feed. And so, we, of course, we know fluid imbalance, great site for infection. So see the windows you can do with your pancakes to show, to show that part. Everybody okay with that? Yes? Good? Okay, wonderful. All right, now, and I, a lot of these you can be broken up into pocket lessons, okay? And I'm just trying to check my timer. There we go, all right, because I have more to give you. Okay, everybody good? So that's what you can do for first, second, and third degree burns. Now I introduce fourth degree burns and I show them to students, but most of the time, fourth degree burns are usually from inside out. They're usually electrical. And that is of course caused by somebody grabbing a hold. I tell them, you know, look how much water your body is made out of. And we are electrical beings. We have positive on the outside and negative on the inside of the cells. And so you have three trillion plus cells with positive on the outside. So you, you that's why when you're walking across the carpet, you pick up electrons. And then Nancy, when you touch Mike, bleep, you shock him. Those electrons jump from you and, doop, and zap him because he's more positive than you. So they have to understand we're very electrical and you can't sit in the tub on your, on your cell phone while it's plugged in. Yes, on your cell phone, that doesn't have enough power if you drop it, but if you drop it and it's plugged in, that's 114 volts or more going through you. Bad news, don't do it. You have to tell students that, you're not gonna think about it. They're not gonna think, oh, I won't drop it. You can. All right, everybody good? Okay, so now I wanna show you this. So we know that this right here, okay, we did this, everybody do this with me, ready? We eat again. Okay, so glucose, now drink water. Go, 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 go. And breathe. Yeah, you literally drank water, that was good. <laughs> Breathe in, that's great. Oxygen, all right, so we had three things. And we're gonna talk about muscles. This tissue feeding is so important in muscles. So we gotta get the muscles, glucose, water, and oxygen, so that it gets your hands up, ready? Everybody wanna see how good you are, ready? Get your hands up there, Nancy. Here we go, ready? And what are we gonna get from those three things? Energy, yeah, uh-huh. There we go, show me your dance, woohoo, yeah, there you go. We're gonna get energy. All right, so you, we all know that muscle cells contract, right? Okay, so inside the muscle cell is this really cool myosin head and it reaches up and it grabs actin and it pulls it in. Y'all see that? It's called power stroke. Boop, pretty cool. In order to let go of this thing, I gotta have ATP. Where do I get ATP from? Glucose, water, and oxygen. As Soon as ATP shows up, I can let go. But if it doesn't show up, I'm not gonna let go. Mm. which means this is called a muscle cramp. So the muscle is lacking three things. It's either lacking glucose to make ATP or it's dehydrated or it's lacking oxygen so it doesn't have enough blood vessels. So if you ever start working out and you haven't worked out in a while, like, you know, start playing pickleball. You haven't been playing pickleball for a while, all right? Yeah, Woo, you're out there 20 minutes and your calves are screaming at you. And you're like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm already tired. But if you keep playing pickleball every day for two weeks, next thing you know, well, you're playing for an hour and a half. Why? Because muscles made more blood vessels 
to deliver those three grocery items so the muscle could have enough ATP, okay? Now, I love teaching this lesson, incorporating this with students because they are dehydrated. They eat too much sugar and they don't drink enough water. So another thing you can do with students is challenge them say, okay, here's the deal. I always have water, okay? I always drink water in front of them. So you have some students that drink six to seven Dr. Peppers a day or Cokes a day or Gatorades a day. Gatorade isn't a recovery drink. It is not to be drank all day long. It has just as much sugar as soda, okay? Now, start trading them out. Say, okay, if you're going to do six Cokes a day, I want you to do one water and five Cokes. Next week, start trading out two and four and start drinking more water because what's the end result? Ready? The end result is energy. If I drink enough water and I drink glucose and I have glucose and I have oxygen, I have more energy. And some students will figure out, oh my gosh, when I'm more hydrated, I stay awake during the afternoon. I'm not sleepy in the afternoon. That's a lot of times afternoon sleepies is dehydration. Okay. So skeletal muscle has to have a lot of water, tons of water. Okay. Now that's the one tissue. If you're lacking water, you're going to get muscle cramps. Now there's a big difference between a muscle cramp and a charley horse. A charley horse is a hit. It's a contusion to the muscle. A cramp is where you lack one of the three, probably water. All right. So I tell students who are athletes, you shouldn't even be drinking sodas. They shouldn't even be on anything you drink ever. Okay. Now last muscle tissue I want to talk to you about is this guy right here. Heart muscle doesn't need glucose. It's ironic. It uses the three tails of uh, um, uh, triglycerides. It uses three fatty acids. It has to have water, but it's not as dependent on water as skeletal muscle. Its number one nutrient is oxygen. All right. So I want to show them the capillary feed in the heart muscle. It has to deliver oxygen. Okay. Now you all know by looking at this, this cross section of the ventricles. This is the left ventricle. And this is the right. It makes sense because this is the workhorse. This is systemic. And this, of course, I'm just pumping to the lungs. How much muscle do I need, right? What do we see right here? We see ischemia, mm -hmm. a lack of oxygen to this tissue. So this little pancake thing that we did right here, if this is muscle tissue, heart muscle tissue, we have to be able to deliver enough oxygen. If not, well, we can make more blood vessels if it's slow enough. But if we don't, then the tissue begins to complain, which we know is pectoralis angina or angina, depends on what part of the country you're from and how you pronounce it. Okay, But whatever it is, it's painful. <laughs> and it's screaming out that in the capillary feed of this muscle, we're lacking oxygen. Heart muscle can go a while without it, but once we know it doesn't have it, it begins to die. And once it dies, this tissue now will be eaten away by white blood, white blood cells and replaced with scar tissue. While the heart is pumping, it'll make a patch. That's why some people have had heart attacks and didn't even know they had one because it patches. Or somebody has a heart attack and you go to visit them, you know, they're a family member and they tell you in the cardiac ICU, okay, now remember this, the first 72 hours, we can't do anything. We're keeping them comfortable. We're making it, you know, it's, you know, it's just a wait and see. That is because while this heart is pumping and this patch is being formed at any time, this could break. Blood, of course, spills out into the pericardial sac and they will die of a peri peri um, pericardial tamponade. Okay, can't do anything about it. Nothing you can do. It's called a ventricular um, aneurysm. Okay, but the number one thing I tell students is don't get one of these. Okay, you do not want any lack of oxygen to the heart. So once again, I'm going to introduce nutrition. Your plasma should not look like this. Okay. It should be nice and beautiful and clear, all right? And so what we do is slowly each week, we give them some kind of nutritional tip. You can start with water. You can start with 
trying to lower the amount of glucose. You can start showing, hey, don't eat this at this restaurant, but you could go over here for the same amount of money and eat something a little healthier. Just by, that was my timer, just tell me I'm not gonna wind down here. So you could tell, now let's go back to our pancakes real quick. We talked about pitting edema early, how you know your socks are embedded when you're healthy and you gotta walk around. When a heart did, let's say he survived this and this is all cardiac patch, scar tissue, this muscle now has to compensate. So heart muscle can't make more of itself. Skeletal muscle can't make more of itself. That's why athletes need to make sure they preserve it all. So what does it do? It stretches in order to explode more, like a rubber band. If I took a rubber band and I barely pulled it back, I might, it might go maybe two or three feet. But if I really want it, I pull it way back here and boom, it'll shoot. We all know that it's Frank Starling's law of the heart. So the heart stretches in order to get more push, okay? We also know it's the beginning of what we call congestive heart failure. And a sign of congestive heart failure is this right here. I'm gonna stick my finger in there. Can you see that? There we go. It's called pitting edema. You stick your finger into that person's uh, ankle and it stays there. Yeah, you see it? It stays there. That's pitting edema. What does that mean? That means that the push of the heart, the fluid in the capillary bed is so slow and there's not good pull out of it. The ankles swell, they get watery, sometimes blisters under their skin. They're not heat related, they're cardio, the congestive heart failure related. All right, so I hope you had fun with this. It's only cost us $3.53. We bought pancakes. And we did all kinds. Now, I actually use this two to three times through the year. The first time I introduced it is with tissues and burns and uh, how to make your bed. The second time I introduce it is the tissue feeding in the capillary. And the third time I do it is showing burns, cardiovascular issues, uh, not burns, but um, cardiovascular issues and what tissues respond to when the heart's not pushing blood out of that capillary pool anymore. So I hope you had a great time. You can find my lessons on my website. You can always call me or you can email me. Most importantly, we're here for you so that you can be successful. And with your students and veteran teachers, you can get more and more tricks and you new teachers, you have a solid start and keep rocking those students world. Thank you, Nancy. Hey, Starla, uh, your website. You. Okay, Starla, your website, starlasteachingtips.com. StarlessTeachTips.com. I'll put it back up for you. I'll put it right here. Oh, just teach There tips. it is. StarlessTeachTips.com. Okay. okay, I'm also putting it in the um, chat. Okay. So, so everybody remember that, um, and there's her. Um, there's my email. Go out and print it yeah. out for you. Yeah. There's her email address. So remember that this recording, just give us a few days. Um, it'll probably be up by Monday of next week. And it's at the our website forward slash webinars. And then um, to register for future webinars, just go to events on our page. And also if you need a certificate, we've put the email there a couple of times. Starla, you wanna grab a few of those questions? Yeah, someone. Okay, pull it up here. Thank you guys. All of you guys were thanking me. Um, you are so welcome. Always here for you. Always. Um, Somebody said, "What was the second module?" Amy. Amy said, "What was the second here, module?" Second module's right here. This is the main one we use today. The pancake lesson step by step is in here. I talked about the movement and communication about how the, the uh, myosin heads and you act that out with a ruler to help students understand contraction. And then I didn't get to uh, show you the, the heart here that we I had built for you that I was going to give you. Um, here it is right here. I built for you with the coronaries. I was going to do a bypass, but we ran out of time. But that is the construction of the heart. And, uh, and then you add a bypass. It has a heart.